Hey, Kaylee. Uh, first off, thank you for reaching out to me with your questions um, and for trusting me uh, with the answers that I give you. Um, I just figured since you had quite a few questions that I would go ahead and um, do this kind of in a video format, uh, but it's actually a slideshow. <laughs> so I'm going to use the four pictures you sent me and then go through the email and answer your questions. Um, so normally, just for anybody else that um, may be watching this, normally um, I am available for consulting when a question has uh, a little bit of a deeper dive to it. Um, so normally there's a fee, um, but I'm happy to do this one for free. Um, I figured I would just go ahead and use it kind of like as an example of um, how the consulting can work, um, even though we are at a quite a distance from one another I'm assuming we've never met and I'm just going by the pictures so um, the first question was you were just wondering is this even too much to take up um, and you've drawn the line you know where the side seam is in the tool of this gown um, obviously it's not clear to us because the lace is overlaying it but you've drawn the line where the side the side seam occurs on the inside of the gown um, so no that is not too much to take up the stress. Basically, you're gonna take your trusty razor or seam ripper, whatever you're comfortable with, and you're gonna pick away all of that lace from the tool that, um, that you can just to get to um, where your new seam needs to be. So if you're gonna take it up, let's say you're taking it up a total of an inch and a half, you're gonna pick away the lace about three quarters of an inch away from the original seam, you know, moving out toward where your new seam is going to be. Uh, sometimes as you do that, the tool is going to be quite damaged. Don't be alarmed. That's not necessarily your fault. Uh, sometimes they use so many stitches when they are applicating this lace to the gown that they've actually kind of chewed up the tool a little bit with the stitches. So that's not your fault. Um, there's definitely going to be some wear and tear in there and you just go ahead and work on it just as if it's not there. Uh, once you get it sewn back together and get the lace sewn over it, I've never really had it be a problem. Uh, speaking of course of the additional weakness from how they have worn the tool out with the way that they um, maybe too thoroughly sewed the lace on, I guess would be a nice way to say that. So there's question number one. Okay, so picture number two, question number two, is talking about um, wanting to narrow this strap a little bit um, and also to uh, deepen that um, underarm of this gown or uh, what we would call an arm's eye. Usually if we're talking about putting a sleeve on a gown, that arm hole. Um, we would call that an arm's eye, but I would just call this deepening the underarm here. It's also kind of swinging forward a little bit too. Um, so what I'm expecting, what I would imagine this bride to be is um, maybe her shoulders are a little more narrow than what the size of the dress is uh, doing for her. So it looks a little wide on her and that she probably, with her posture, she carries her arms a little more to the front than she does, you know, to the side of her body. She, she probably doesn't hold her shoulders um, back and broad. She just kind of has this comfortable little forward roll with her shoulders. So a lot of times when I see a bride who has that uh, frame and that way of standing, I'll see this kind of alteration. So basically what you're going to do again is you're going to pick away all that lace from the edge um, and you can give her the option if she wants it to be reversible or not. If she doesn't care about it being reversible and she mainly wants less bulk, then you're going to cut away the dress. Um, all of the illusion is what we're talking about, that net, that, that um, the see-through illusion part. You're going to cut that, or they call it um, illusion tool. I'm not sure what you're calling it when you look at it, so I just want to make sure I'm not throwing words out there that you're not understanding. I'm not talking about the satin part of the bodice. I'm talking about that net, and I hesitate to say um, nude 
because as we know, nude is a different color for everyone, but that's supposed to be blending in with her skin. So you're going to cut that away if she wants less bulk. Um, you, you know, lift the lace off and cut it away. If she doesn't mind the bulk, which that illusion is not going to give her a lot of bulk. You could also just um, take the lace off from the edge everywhere you need to work and then just put in some relief notches and just fold it under and kind of just gently hand stitch that down with invisible thread or whatever. You can also just fold it under and pin it in place and then when you put the lace back down along the edge to give that nice lace edge, um, when you do your applique stitch with that, with the invisible thread and the applique work there, that's going to hold that illusion tucked in for you. That's actually the way I would do it because I, I try to save time. I wouldn't want to hand stitch it down and then stitch the lace over. So then the other thing is um, the satin part of the bodice, how that yellow line that you drew cuts through the satin part. Um, this is the outer part of the cup, almost going toward the underarm. And let me show you the other angle you sent me. All right, so this is uh, the view from the inside. And this is kind of showing that intersection there um, right at the underarm. So um, there's two different ways that you can do this. Um, one, if you have a hard time remembering exactly what shape you're going to do, you can take a little piece of post-it note or whatever and just keep laying it over, you know, kind of where you've drawn this orange line where your pens are making that line. You can lay it over that, sketch it over it, cut it out and make a template that's shaped just like um, the how the satin needs to be changed. Okay, let me show you what I'm talking about here. Okay, so you can see my blue outline that I sketched on here. I would literally take a piece of paper. Now, this is when I was first starting to sew and kind of not really had a lot of confidence yet in my spatial memory. I would just kind of draw this out on a template. Um, this is also very helpful if you have to do something multiple times and it needs to be exactly the same. Um, so you can lay the template out. Um, I always do a template or almost always do a template when I'm doing like cutting out a sweetheart neckline, for instance, just so it's perfectly symmetrical. There's no question, no wobble, nothing. So anyways, I would just kind of sketch that shape out on a piece of paper and cut it out and then just double check it, you know, make sure it's exactly what you're picturing um, with the pens. And okay, so I've um, indicating that now in a solid blue, like I said, you could just use a post-it note for this one or whatever little piece of paper. Next, you're going to flip the dress wrong side out, just kind of tunnel up in there between the layers, pull the dress through, get a hold of that corner, you know, pull that through. And then you're going to see where you can lay that piece of paper back down in there. I'm sorry, you would obviously have to take the pens out first, right? Um, or make sure that the pens only just go through the lace or something if you're nervous of completely taking them out. A lot of times I would just take pictures of it if I was afraid. That way I could recreate where the pins were. But you grab that corner, pull it through, and then you can see where you could lay that paper again. Now if you want, you can really lightly draw with a pencil or some type of um, temporary disappearing ink. Just very, very light. Don't do anything that will permanently mark even the inside of the gown. I never leave permanent marks on the inside of the gown. Um, you can also just do a baste stitch around that template of, of where you're going to need to go. And then when you pull the template away, um, all you do is you stitch along that, um, that new shape, that new edge. Um, and then you are going to have to do some relief snips, you know, where you snip the fabric all the way up to the seam line so that it can, um, when you flip it, it can lay flat in there. It won't be bound by its own seam allowance. Um, but you'll want to do that for that segment of the alteration and then just keep working your way through. Obviously, each part of this dress, you're going to have to shorten it a little bit different way. It's always going to involve removing the lace temporarily from the area, making the 
the main body of that of the dress wherever you're working make it the right shape um, and then put the lace back down I do usually do a fitting without putting the lace back down yet and I warn the bride okay this is gonna be scary but I want to see you in the dress without the lace overlay sewn on so that way we know that we're on the right track and if we need to make any tweaks it's really easy to adjust without having to move the lace every time um, not every seamster does that um, some seamsters are afraid of scaring their brides um, by bringing it out looking like it was tore up <laughs> <laughs> but I've found if you just tell them ahead of time it's part of the process and it always looks scary in the middle um, then they'll they'll usually be cool with it and they'll appreciate your carefulness all right so fourth and final picture what are these bizarre hang loops or hanger loops um, I do have a video if you want to go to my uh, channel homepage and look through my videos I do have one about hang loops or hanger loops people call them different things um, but essentially this is just a way to hang the dress from the hanger without stressing the sheer top the top just can't um, over the long term bear its own weight of the whole dress you know pulling on it and so basically they'll attach the hanger loops there at the waist a lot of times there'll be a little loop um, near the underarm or the or the side top of the bodice edge that you can um, feed that ribbon through and that's going to kind of help support the top part of the dress but basically this is because you don't want the dress to be hanging by the shoulder straps or by hanger loops that are going to distort the top of the dress um, by bearing the whole weight of the gown so a lot of times I do have to temporarily cut them out when I'm resizing a gown I just cut them out and lay them aside um, and then I sew them back in when I'm done or when I'm ready to use them again uh, so yeah that's what they are thank you again for trusting me with these sewing questions I know what you're looking for You've been sewing for years, but you want to get into full-time bridal sewing. But there's something missing. You're missing the backroom secrets, the industry tips and tricks. The tools, the sources, the techniques that give you the speed, and the accuracy that the industry demands. You have found it.